Okay, everybody, welcome to our cookie do session tonight. Um, the first thing we're going to cover is just setting up your um, filters, just to make sure that you're getting all of the recipes that you can possibly get. So um, I find a lot of this is quite easy to do on both the phone and the computer. We are working on the computer tonight. So you should all be able to see my, hello, Amy, what would you like to cook today? Which is my cookie do. And up the top right hand corner here, you'll see my name. This is where you'll find all your profile things. So you can go into my profile. From here, you can edit things. So you can include or disclude anything that you do or don't have. So I've just gotten my sensor. So I've clicked include there. Um, if you don't have these accessories, you can, of course, leave them included. It just means that you may need to do things by hand. Um, if you want to exclude those recipes so they're not coming up tempting you, by all means, click them off so that they are not included in your search. Um, I personally like to have my filter set to TM6 and English, but no country. Um, and this is just because you get a wider range of recipes. Um, it does mean that you'll get some that are in grams and some that are in ounces, but your Thermomix will swap over between the two and then default back to whatever you are set um, predominantly. So everyone's machines being set up in Australia should be set to grams. Um, but yes, if you run a, a recipe from America, it will swap over to ounces and then swap back after the recipe is completed. Um it does mean that you will get some double ups of recipes because there are English versions, Australian versions and American versions of some recipes. You'll also find some that are Swiss um, and there's a few other countries that have a few thrown in as well. But I think the most I've ever come up with is three duplicates of the same recipe. Would you agree, Georgia? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I actually have a different language on mine as well. So... If you can speak a different language, by all means, add that language in. Yeah. Um, I can speak, I can't read, so I just use Google Translate. So don't let that stop you, you know, from getting a nice, like, authentic, you know, Italian or a Greek or, you know, an Asian recipe if that's what you want to cook. There's also that option of um, Google Translate as well. Yeah. So if we jump back to the home screen here, you'll see there are quite a few different little uh, sections here. So there's what's new. There's always some nice things about what's going on across the world, um, centuries old as well. Um, just some ideas of different variations and recipes that you may be inclined towards. Um, some information around our created and our serving sizes. So this is your scale scaling recipes. So you can scale them up and down to suit you. Um, and then there's this section here with what's the community cooking. So what's been really popular on Cookie Do and our latest collections. This I always love to have a little look in and see what's new to Cookie Do. Um, it's a, a really good place for a little bit of an inspiration. So is everybody set up and using their Cookie Do? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, good. So who's been using it for meal planning? No. No? No. Okay. Um, I meal plan in mine in, in Cookie Do every week. Um, so I will show you my week and you'll see it's very full. Um, some weeks more so than others. Um, but it goes back for the seven years that I've been cooking with Thermomix. It's full. Um, so I'll give you a little look-see. So I do my meal plan... Friday morning and I will put in everything and go do my grocery shop that day. So you can see over here, this is my shopping list, all those different recipes that we were making for the week. Um, you can view this two different ways. This is the other view. This is the view I quite like to look at on the computer. Um, and you can go back and forth through it. So you can say I'm quite a cookie do enthusiast. Um, Finding these recipes is as simple as just doing a search. So from our explore tab, I will generally go to my fridge and go, I have leftover cabbage. That was one that happened to me this week. So I'll just put in cabbage. 
and it comes back with all these recipes that you can pick from. So there are 265 recipes all using cabbage that you can choose from. From there, I would just go through and pick out the ones that I like or that I, I would like to try. You can put them into a collection. You can put them into your planner, um, whichever you prefer. So if you haven't made this pork belly cabbage rice, I do recommend it. It is delicious. Um, but I just go through here and I go, yep, that's the one that I'm going to cook this week. And I'll pop it into my planner where I think it's going to work. The nice thing with yeah. the recipes is that every single one of them will tell you how long it's going to take. And when you go in, you can see how long you are going to be involved, your total time and your portions. Now, this recipe is one which has had some, um, oh, no, it has not. So it says four, por four portions here. And if you click on that box, it does give you the option of adjusting the sizings. Now, because this one has not had this done already, you have the option to do it yourself. Um, and it's not a hard thing to do, but there is um, a couple of things to keep in mind around the quantities that your bowl can uh, take. So just making sure that you are mindful of the capacity. Some of our other recipes, for instance, I know the... Um, bolognese so this one here is the bolognese from the basic book and you'll see here the four portions and if you click that you have the option to scale it either down to two or up to six so these ones have already been tested by cookie do and they know they're going to work at those quantities similarly the chunky bolognese, again, I know this one because I cook it quite a bit. There will be adjustments that are made to the recipe. So this one for um, serve six, it is the meat is cooked in the simmering basket. But when you scale up to serves eight, it actually cooks the mince in the Varoma for you. So just be mindful that sometimes they will make those adjustments to accommodate for the capacities. Uh, because if you tried to put the whole kilo of mince into the bowl, it just wouldn't fit. You'd be overflowing everywhere. So they make those adjustments to make sure that the whole thing is going to fit and be cooked. Does that make sense for everybody? Mm. Yeah. And obviously it will adjust your time a little bit. Um, but yeah, just be mindful of that. So... Say, for instance, we wanted to add this one to our meal plan. You could click cook today if you wanted it for today. Otherwise, you're clicking add and add to my week and you can pick what day you want it. So this is a favorite for my family. We would probably have it um, every couple of weeks, I'd say. And we didn't have it on the planner this week. So we could put that for Monday and just save it in. So you can go through and do your meal plan like that. Um, you can also add these to collections. So you can set up collections however you like by just clicking the add to collection and then create collection to create it the way that you prefer. You'll see mine are set up with predominantly different um, ingredients um, or different styles of eating. And this just comes from the fact that I'm a veggie gardener so when I have a glut of zucchinis or pumpkin, I like to be able to go and find a recipe specific for that to use it up without searching cookie do. I can just go to that collection. Does anybody use their collections? No, I haven't. No? It's a good one to have a little play with. Even if you just find some recipes that go, oh, that looks interesting, I'll just save that so that I can have a look at it another time. Um, that was one of the things I did when I first started playing with Cookie Do because I wanted some inspiration and I didn't want to have to search for it every single time. Okay, so I always recommend that you start off with the basics, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and add a few things in each. And from there, start building your collections to maybe like a dessert. My favourite collection is things to make. So every time someone posts something in my group that I haven't made before, so I don't forget, I added into a collection which I call uh, Things to Make. 
Um, and that way when you're stuck and you don't know what else to try or what to make, I, you know, look through that collection. Um, the other thing that's really good is, again, like what Amy said, like you can bring it down in ingredients. So if you get like a fruit box or if you usually go to the supermarket and you're always stuck with those, say, like, you know, leftover bananas, you know, do a banana, you know, collection. So anytime you've got those, you know, bananas going a bit yucky, refer back, back to that collection. Um, there's so much that you can do with those collections. Yeah. And being able to search by ingredient, um, even just, the cookie do as a whole really does help to reduce your waste um, because it means that you get to the end of the week and you look in the fridge and you go, oh, I've got that little bit of this or I've got a piece of that and what, how am I going to use it up rather than throwing it into the compost or the bin? Exactly. All right. So once we have a recipe in our week and you can do this for a whole week, it doesn't have to be Yes, you can search by multiple ingredients. It just gets a little bit more tricky. I'll show you very quickly. So you can go into the filters here and you can type in specific ingredients. So, and you, you can click one and then you can click another one. So you can search for multiple ingredients, but it will um, very much restrict Ooh. the amount of things that you're finding. So, and even if you take the name out, so you can see by going water, carrot, red cabbage, we get 34 recipes. Um, so you can use it to try and refine it down to use up everything you've got. I personally tend to just go one ingredient at a time because there are staple things that I have in my uh, fridge and cupboards. Like I always have onions. I always have carrots, um, always have potatoes. But when they're looking like they're sort of on their last legs, I like to use them up. And that's a really good way of doing it. So, yeah, when, when we get back to our meal plan for the week, you can click on each recipe and just go add to shopping list. So we'll do this week just for demonstration. And then you can click on show ingredients. Now, if you're doing this on a phone, you will see it down the bottom in your Cookie Do app, there are the different screens. So you're just going to click on the shopping list one. And you can see here all of your recipes show up. It's a little bit hard to see on this screen, but there are little boxes over here. So you can click on, so the half teaspoon of baking powder, baking soda, sorry. You can click the box and it goes items you have. So it disappears from your shopping list. So if you already have a lot of this on hand, it's a really good way to refine your shopping list. Um, all of the water, you can probably click off, check through your cupboards, see if you've got the flour or if you need to buy it. It means that you're not going to have copious amounts of things on hand that you're not going to use up. You know, a couple of tablespoons of milk. We buy milk by the liters. So, you know, never any fear of that. Parmesan cheese. This is a great place to check your freezer if you buy in bulk. I know I buy my chicken breasts and things in bulk. So then I will be able to go, yep, we use three. I've got two, pop them in the freezer. And inevitably I'll be able to pull three breasts out of the freezer rather than going and buying them from the supermarket. So it really does help you to minimize what you have to shop for and it gives you a very clear list it's broken down by category so you can go to that aisle pick up all the things you need move on to the next aisle right. you can also swap this back to buy recipe so if you want to have your whole list and then just swap over and go oh i don't have time today i just want to nick in and grab all the things that i want for today's recipe <sighs> You can also do that by going through by the individual recipe. Those boxes are still there, so you can click them on and out, uh, in and out. If you want to remove something, it's just the three little dots and remove this from my shopping list. The whole recipe will disappear for you. You can, of course, add multiples of the same recipe. If you're intending to cook it more than once in a week, you can... Um, when we're on my week, you can add it in twice. You'll see there's a times two there. And when you go into the recipes, 
it's two lots. So instead of being 600 grams of beef, it's 1,200. So it is scalable like that as well. And then you can just reduce an item down. So you can't change um, what's already stipulated in the list. What you could do, however, is click off the three and down the bottom, you could add in under the additional items, one chicken breast. So if you've already got some in your fridge or your freezer, you can accommodate for that and just add in what it, what you need to get as an extra. Here for me, I've got two little kids who have sandwiches for school every day. So I'm always adding in my cold cuts, my milk, my cheese, um, butter, toilet paper, all those things you can add in here and use it as a universal shopping list. You don't have to have another app or another piece of paper that you're taking with you. It can all sit here. The only thing to be mindful about with that is that these additional items will not move into the sections. So that's going to sit under additional items. It's not going to end up back in your meat section. So even when you search by category, because it's just an item, it doesn't recognize it as being a meat item. It will always sit separately. Okay. So once you have your shopping list, um, sorted you do have a couple of options you can walk around the supermarket and collect them and click them off on your phone you can email this by sharing it you can email it to a friend you can print it and the other one you can do is order ingredients so if you shop with Woolworths and you have your Woolworths um, online set up you can actually go through and add these to a cart at Woolworths um, so for instance, it's got the cast of sugar there. Now you can swap it from here to say the essentials. If you would rather have, oops, apologies. If you'd rather buy the essentials rather than the, the, um, CSR, things like that, you can swap them out. So that's a half a kilo. This is one kilo. Say so we're going to go that way. You can go through and do that for every single item there if you want to. Um, and once you've done that, you go add to Woolworths cart. Add 39 items. Now, I've, oh, I'm not logged in. I've actually done my shopping for this week, so I won't be ordering this, but I'll just show you. Sorry. <laughs> so you can see what happens is basically it comes up and tells you whether you can have a pickup or a delivery. Um, you can put in which store you want to go to and then save it set your time. So that's all as you would normally do. But what happens is that it all sits in your shopping count, your shopping cart. And then from here, it will let you know. So these items are not available. These are the ones you're going to have to go and swap out for something slightly different to replace them because you can't purchase the ones that you'd originally assigned. That all makes sense? Anybody have questions around using the Woolworths app for your shopping? No, I don't no. use it anyway, so <laughs> too lazy. Look, I have to say I used to use it a lot, especially during COVID. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but these days I tend to shop at a green grocer and a butcher. Yes. So I'm, I've not been using that function. But it is very convenient, especially for all like your tinned goods, your dairy, if you want to go that way. Um, but that is an option for you. Yeah, sometimes what I like doing with these shopping lists, like if I've got a budget for the week that I can only spend on, you know, groceries, I like to do this just to gauge how much my groceries are going to cost. Yeah. And then I head off. I do the same as Amy, either to the green grocer or the butcher or another supermarket, um, you know, where I know I can maybe get better value or, or different yeah, products. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, times are tough for a few people at the moment and that's a good way just to see, you know, if the recipes that you're choosing can meet your budget for the week. Mm. So you can just do that ahead of time. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously delete your list or, you know, keep your yeah. list and just tick it off as you go somewhere else. That's true. Yeah, there's a lot of options there. Absolutely. And when you're searching for recipes, if you have a particular diet that you're working with or if you're looking for um, a, a particular type of recipe, like some people are keto, some are paleo, all those sorts of things, you can actually refine um, your searches through that as well. So same place under these filters, you can exclude I ingredients as well. Um, so if there's something that you specifically do not want in the recipe, you can pop it in there. Um, and the tags are here as well. So if you've got vegetarian, vegan, egg-free, dairy-free, any of those sorts of things, this is a really good place to put that in. Um, if you want a recipe that's a specific time frame, remembering that your t preparation time and your total time are different. So if you want to be able to cook the meal within 30 minutes, make sure you're going for that total time, not your preparation time. Um, and the portions are there. I don't find that they're, I don't find it to be a great one um, because what generally happens is you go, yeah, I want two per two portions. So it brings you everything that's two portions or more. Um, so if you say four portions, you'll get everything that's four portions or more, not specifically four portions. Mm -hmm. um, so handy if you're wanting to have leftovers. Or if you, you're saying, I want to feed at least this many. But if you're looking for recipes that are specifically for two, there could, because there are only two of you, this may not be as helpful as it, it potentially could be. Um, just be mindful of that. But then you can just downscale as well. So Yes, absolutely. You can scale it up and down. But all of those are there um, in the functions. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for specific um types of eating so like I did keto recently and I did find that I could just type keto um but it, it only comes back with the recipes that have keto in the name uh which was a fair few it, it gave me a good base to start with but if you go into the filters and you type in here under the tags ketogenic diet you'll get a different selection so some will be the same, some will not. You can also use things like um, under 500 calories. Um, it will come back with things like that as well. Mm -hmm. You can also go from recipes into collections. All right. But when you swap to collections, they don't always stay in English. So just make sure you go back and you click on the, oh, it's not there. Um, yeah, just make sure that you're mindful that when you're going to collections, it's not necessarily in English. Mm -hmm. All right. Same as those keto ones. There's a whole lot of keto books there, but they're not all in English. Um, and because of, of course, cookie do is so flexible. You may, if you were doing something like keto, you might be able to just go for low carb and then make some amendments as you go. Um, and when you do things like that, you have the option to create your own recipes. So if we go by recipes, there's a section here called created. No, sorry. Where is it, Georgia? Yeah, just go underneath. Go, go back. Maybe in my recipes. Let's go created. And that's the one that's got like the pen. Go scroll back up. The pen. Oh, there you go. Created recipes. I just looked straight past it. Sorry, guys. And this is where you can put in your own recipes. So you have two options on how you do these. One is to import them from the recipe community. So you can go add import. And then you just need to know what the recipe is. Mm -hmm. So you pick something from here. Um, recipe of the week. Hearty Italian fennel and chicken soup with white beans. That looks delicious. So this is the recipe that we're wanting to import. You just grab this nice long 
URL here. Copy. So right click and copy, or if you're like me, it's a control C. And then back in here, paste it in, import. There's also a little tab in there that just says add to cookie do if that's easier as well. Ooh, I haven't seen that one. Oh, yes, add okay. to cookie do. Look at that. Mm. That's an easier option. Yeah. So it will automatically detect a whole bunch of the information for you and pull it across properly. Um, that's on the basis that it has been put in correctly. So this here, six minutes on 100 speed one, it looks like it's going to run properly so that when you actually click through this on your machine, it will automatically set those things for you and you just turn the dial. And let's just clarify, this is TM6 only. So the lady, yes. sorry, I forgot what your name was that had the TM5. You won't be able to do this with your cookie um, on your TM5. You'd be able yes. to just look back onto your cookie do and do it manually. Yeah. So you'd be able to import it to cookie do. It just wouldn't run on your machine. So you would have to do all of this manually. But it's a handy way to just keep everything in one place. All right. The other nice thing from here is you do have the option to adjust and change things. So you can move the steps up and down. You can junk them. You can change the orders. Or when we've confirmed the recipe, you should be able to make amendments. Yeah. So the pencils come up and then you can go in and edit them. So you can type, chop, cut. You can make all those um, changes as you choose. <clears throat> Same thing if you were typing a recipe in yourself, you can add in all of the individual ingredients and you can pop all these in. When you're trying to put it in like this so that it's underlined and it, it runs as a function, um, you just want to use... The blade is your cooking settings and the scales will link your ingredients so that they show up and, and tell you exactly what it wants you to weigh in. So your cooking um, settings, manual mode is your minutes and seconds, what temperature, what speed, and modes give you the option of your dough, turbo blend, warm up and rice cooker. Similarly, you can set the time there for those as well. So that's how that works anybody have any questions around that no um amy so yes you know, going back for everyone you know where you went from collections to recipe do you want to just do that a little bit slower just to make everyone aware that they can actually search by books as well because i know i've come across in the past um you know team 31 users or team 5 users which have been used to buying just a cookbook. Yep. To cook with. So you can actually access all the cookbooks here, not necessarily by recipe, but by cookbook itself. And because I like, like I like to flick through a book. And since Cookie Do's come along, I like to grab Cookie uh, Cookie Do, open up a collection and just scroll through that, like on my iPad, you know, while I'm on the couch or in bed. Um, yeah. It's like having a book. So that's um, something that I just want to touch on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you have two ways of doing this. You can search for the book name. Um, so I know there's a low carb book just because I was talking about it with a friend the other day. And then when you go into a recipe, it tells you which collection or book it's in down here, um, which is nice because if you find the book you want, you can just click on it and it will take you to the full collection. It's a nice, easy way of navigating. But you can go from recipes over here, click it, to collections. So all of a sudden you've got all those cookbooks. These available. are all cookbooks or collections. So they may only be like 10 recipes, but they're all similar and they've been um, put together. So this is the book that I was thinking of, Low Carb Made Easy. This is a full-size book. Um and you can see here 49 recipes and they're all listed there for you. So. May I just a... ask, under, yes. under collections, yep. are those books already there on yes. your, under your collections or do you have to somehow import them? 
no, they're all sitting on Cookie Do already. Yeah. Um, so you you just search for whatever you're looking for. Okay. Um, you know, I think there's a whole lot for Christmas. Yep. As a an example. So these okay. ones are all based around Christmas. Good. Uh, but they're all sitting on Cookie Do ready to go, and you can just go in and and search through Thank them. You. Thank you. Sometimes it's just easier to look for a collection than it is to look for an individual recipe. Um, you know, mm. if you know you've got a theme but you're not looking for something specific, um, gifts is another one that's really good. Um, like there's a lot of gift recipes on here. So if you're doing like Christmas hampers and things like that, this is a really good place to start. Um, and here you can see... This is obviously the same book, but one's in English and one's not. Yeah. You know, gems and jellies, vegan, you know, Halloween, things like that. My favourite way to search to say if I'm having, you know, guests over and we're having, a, for example, like an Indian night, rather than going through and searching, you know, every single curry that I know the name of, I'll go to a collection and I'll bring up like a few of the Indian cookbooks and then I'll just scroll through them and see what catches my eye that way. Yeah. So it's just another way... <laughs> You know, inspiring yourself, I suppose. And just by all these collections that you're seeing here and see how much value Cookie Do actually gives you per year because yeah. most of these collections are worth $50 just on their own mm. if you want to buy them. So I know this one here is a full-size book. That's one of the Australian books. It's actually um, one of my favourite books. Yeah, it's one of mine too. Um, but it's a really handy way to just go... Yes, this is the Australian book, but you don't have to cook from the Australian books. You can have a look around and find something else that suits you. So can you just click on that one for me, Amy, and just show? Sure can. Click through. So all of a sudden you've got all those recipes within that book. You've got your basics, your main meals, your desserts, all categorised. So it's so easy just to, you know, get your dinner sorted for, you, you know, your family or your guests if you're having a theme. Mm. Yeah. And further to your filters so say so we're in our indian stuff here filters you can choose which part of the meal you want it so if you want it to be the main and you want a meaty one click the main meal that has narrowed it down to 24 results right all right so you can do that as well um, and i know that is something that i do a lot when i'm doing my meal plan because i only cook dinner of a night um most of our snacks and lunches and things are just easy prep, prep ahead stuff. Um, but my main meals is something that I will plan. So I'll generally do uh, main dish meat. I'll do pasta and rice. I'll do vegetarian and fish. And we are meat eaters. So predominantly when I'm looking at the vegetarian meals, I'm looking at something as a side. Um, but it just helps me to narrow down what I'm cooking mm -hmm. like what I'm looking at rather than looking at the whole um the whole of cookie do which is I think the last number I heard was 85,000 recipes um rather than looking at that many I've narrowed this down to 200 recipes so it's just making it all a bit easier for me rather than taking in the whole of cookie do in one hit all right mm -hmm. Has anybody added their own recipe other than using the import function? No. No. Is anybody interested to hear a bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So, oh, what's that doing? So, we'll jump. Oh, goodness. My recipes. So, Created recipes, and there's a plus down the bottom here. And all you do, create recipe. Um, I don't have a recipe off the top of my head, but I'm sure we can find something. We just create something simple, a bolognese or something. Yeah, so we all know, we'll just call it bolognese. We all know the basics of bolognese. So what would we put in a bolognese? Minced meat. Yep. 
and we'd probably use onion, onion, yeah. garlic, yeah. celery, onion, garlic. That's where I hide a lot of vegetables. Celery, yes. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people use zucchini. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and obviously there's some tomatoes in there. Uh, who uses tin tomatoes and who uses passata? Both. 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 I use tin tomatoes. I can't spell tonight. And tomato paste. No. So there are our ingredients. Now, if you had quantities there oh carrot yes I knew there was something else I missed yeah. um there's probably other things too but this is just to give us an idea so our first steps what would we put in first mm, onion mm. yep so add when you go ingredients yeah. click our onion would we put anything else in to chop up at start to start carrot yeah. I heard carrot, garlic, garlic, carrot, probably celery. our celery as well. Yep. Yeah. And probably our zucchini, I'd say, if we want it all nice and chopped up and hidden. Yep. So that's adding those ingredients. Okay. Next step, we're going to process it. So how long would we chop it up for, do you think? No idea. <laughs> so I think if we had a look at a recipe, we would probably find that it's something like 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Any temperature? No. No. And our speed would probably be, what do you reckon, Georgia? Five. Yeah, five. I'm thinking five. And that's our step. So that's going to set it up so that when we go to that step on the machine, it's already set there for us. We just have to wind the dial. Okay. Good. Okay. And then next step would be to saute. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we might, oh, you know what we've got, oil. 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 <laughs> but so you can jump back and you can add that in. That in. So, oops. Where's it gone? Seems like my computer's frozen. My internet's playing up. Yeah, same here. Yeah. But you can see how this is quite a simple process. You just add it in. You can add to the um, ingredients as you need to. You write those steps. If you make, muck it up and you want to adjust it, you can. Mm. Okay, I think my page has crashed. So we'll just exit get it to pull back there we go so so add our oil and we'd probably be going for what do you think two minutes mm -hmm. also, Tem yeah. temperature 100 100, 100. Um, speed two one <laughs> so you can yeah. tell using up their mixes for quite a while. <laughs> or one. Yep. One. Yeah, so somewhere in that one to two. So we might go 1.5. Yeah. And when you make this the first time, you might go, oh, that was a bit fast. Next time I'm going to cook that, I'll just adjust it down to one. Mm. Or mm, I think it needed to move more than that. We'll put it up to two. Or it wasn't long enough to get the browning that I wanted. Let's adjust it. So you can go back in and you can amend this to suit you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we all happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. So this is how you would create your own recipe and or um, make adjustments to an existing recipe. Mm -hmm. So I know for myself there is um, so this one here, the Thai green cur chicken curry. Now, this recipe, it says created by me. It's not. It's um, just that I input it into Cookie Do because this is the thick variation of this recipe. 
So when you read this variation, right down the bottom in the notes, it says, for a thicker sauce, make these amendments. And I got really sick of having to read that every time I wanted to cook this. So I put the recipe in so that I could just use it straight from there and it was easy. Mm -hmm. Once you've got them sitting here, you can still add them to your meal plan and you can still add them to your shopping list as well. But everything in them will fall into that additional items okay. rather than being mm -hmm. categorised. All right. So it's just something to be mindful of. All right. Now, I think we've covered everything. Uploading our own recipes, saving, editing, serving sizes, adjusting filters, searching and meal planning, and ordering from your shopping list. Does anyone have any questions? No, it's very good. It's been very informative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it hasn't been overwhelming. I've no. seen windows that I haven't seen before. Yeah. <laughs> Who's inspired to make something different this week? Well, you're still winding, <laughs> That's okay. Hello there. <laughs> Anyone got anything they think they might cook this week that they happened to see while we were scrolling around? Mm. But I will go and have a look now. Now yeah. that I know what to do and how to do it, I'll have a play. Yeah. So, did everyone else go all good? Most of you on. Um, so if you want to just pop it in the chat, you can as well. No, that was good. Thank you. I haven't um, used it before. I just upgraded from the um, TM31. Yeah, and yeah. so I haven't actually used Cookadoo other than looking around the app. I haven't used it on my Thermomix. So that's really good. And it's handy to see where the books are and mm, yeah. um, creating your own recipes. So yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure you've got some favourites. You sound like a you know, really long time user. <laughs> The Thermomix, yes, but not with Cookadoo, sorry. Oh, no. I used, used, to, used to just the paper books or making it up as I go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll probably be very good with the created recipes then. Like if you're used to cooking manually, you'll be very aware of how to mm, build a recipe. Yeah. Um, whereas myself, I tend to just go, I want that. I'll cook mm. it and I'll follow all the steps and I just follow the mm. recipe. Um, yeah. But, yeah, if, if you're using it on your... Thermomix, you will find that it's a lot easier to navigate if you're using your phone or a tablet or a computer. Um, it's it's just a lot easier to look at and it's less laggy. Um, mm. I do find that when I'm trying to search Cookie Do on the Thermomix, it does get a little bit slow because mm. it has to go away and think. Um, whereas to do it on the computer, it's a lot easier. Not a problem, Amanda. Yeah. So, yeah. Does no, anybody no. have any any last questions? No, that's great. Thank oh, you very much. Not a problem. Yeah. So, and I hope we have some more of these. If that's okay, I'm Absolutely. sure we can feed that back. Yeah, terrific. <laughs> okay, thank you. No Good worries. Night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 So, Sandy, if you just want to hang around, and we can get some information from you. Okay, sounds good. No worries.